the first video, we understood how one pixel works. Let's look on the big picture now. A full HD display, taking this as an example, has a resolution of 1920 columns times 1080 rows. This equals around 2 million pixels or 6 million subpixels needed to get to this resolution. Each display is an array of m columns times n rows. The data lines connect to each subpixel column-wise, while the gate lines connect in rows to the gates of the TFTs. To update the brightness of each subpixel, the gate driver opens all TFTs in one row n, while keeping the other TFTs in other rows off. The source driver then refreshes every voltage on the LC cells in row n. This happens in parallel. Once the cell voltages are updated, each pixel is stored at the brightness level it should represent. The gate driver then opens row n plus 1 to update the brightness there, scans to the next row and so on and so on, until the complete frame is refreshed. This happens usually within 1 by refresh rate seconds, around 17 milliseconds if the refresh rate is 60 Hz. All pixel refreshes need to happen precisely at the right point of time. Source and gate drivers need to be in phase to each other and the video signals must be adopted to the characteristics of the LCD panel. This is done by the timing controller or TCOM. Sometimes LCD displays need a further component, the level shifter. To achieve smaller bezels, but also to save on cost, the gate driver becomes a chip on glass component. The electrical performance on class is not good enough to drive the row signals to turn on and off the TFTs. That's why the level shifter is needed as an external component. A gamma buffer can be a further component of a display. This device adjusts the transfer curve of the digital color code to the resulting voltage applied on a pixel. This helps to match one display to the other to cope with production tolerances but also to get a better color representation, essentially on screens where the image quality should be a different shade. To power all the components mentioned before, there are PMIX available, optimized for different screen sizes, resolutions and end equipment. These PMIX are usually referred to as LCD bias supply or just LCD power supply. Primarily supplying the gate and source driver, these PMIX can contain further supply rates such as to supply the TCON touchscreen and so on, and integrate further blocks such as the VCOM buffer, level shifter and or gamma buffer. Essentially for small size displays, one IC can cover more or less every block needed such as the source driver, TCON and the power supply. For larger screen sizes, it makes sense to distribute these components over several ICs, as typical process nodes can be either strong in analog power or in the digital domain. Also the power loss and thermal considerations can be a barrier for further integration into a single IC. Talking of power loss, LCD displays are significantly better than the former CRT technology, consuming around 10% power. This, by the way, was the foundation of LCDs breaking through in portable, battery-driven devices such as smartphones. The highest contributor to the overall power consumption is the backlight. The light transmittance of typical LCD panels is just around 7 to 15 percent as a maximum so the backlight must be significantly brighter compared to the environment. Efficient backlight power supplies, named backlight drivers, contribute significantly to a good overall power consumption. Usually strings of white LEDs are used as a backlight. These can be located at the edges, named edge lit, or behind the LCD, named direct lit. If the direct lit panel is not driven at constant currents but as a matrix of white LEDs, these can be controlled individually depending on the image content. This is often called HDR for high dynamic range or local dimming backlight. 
The local dimming of the LEDs can help to increase the maximum contrast ratio. To get closer to the contrast ratio of an AM OLED display, a technology I will talk about in one of my next videos.